Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Mr. Wiz here with another Make Code Arcade extension that we're going to be covering today. We are looking at the arcade stories today. This is an interesting one that I myself have not used very often, but it can be pretty cool if you're building a game that has a rich story. So we're going to get all into that here in a minute. Uh, first things first, if you are new to this channel, we build video games. If you've never worked with Make Code Arcade, I have already completed an entire series for you to check out. It'll teach you how to build good games in Make Code Arcade. Right now, we are working on an extension series, and there are a lot of extensions that we're covering in this series. So as I mentioned, today we're going to be talking about the Arcade Story extension. Right now, behind me is the game we first built when we were learning about tile maps, and we've added so much to it. In fact, we were just on this one in the last video. We are learning about the text sprites. And before we get into this video, I just want to mention something real quick that I failed to mention in the text sprite video. You can change the color of your text sprite. I didn't mention that. So you'll see this right here where it has treasure found. If you click on the plus sign, you can actually change the color. So I was able to change mine to gold instead of the original white color. So sorry, I forgot to mention that in the last video, but now you know. Okay, so we are going to be adding some stuff to this video. I also have a separate program we're going to be using because I wanted to show you guys some of the variety you could do with this extension. So to find the Arcade Story extension, you go to Extensions, you scroll down, and it's this one with the smiley face and the sad face. These are icons that are very common in theater. So that's the idea behind Arcade Story is it helps you put on a show, right? Um, and most people use this for creating cutscenes in their game. And that is definitely the primary use, but it doesn't have to be the only use. And that's why I pulled up this program to demonstrate that. So it, once you add it, it adds as its own section in the toolbox. And there are some blocks here. We're gonna talk about most of these in this video. So the first thing here just throws some text on the screen. So not all that different than the text sprites that we learned about in the last video. The biggest difference is that these are temporary text. So to give you an example, I'm going to throw this inside of the part of the game where we're collecting treasure. So we collect treasure and then I want it to say, I found one. All right. So here's what ha here's the first problem I'm running into. I want you guys to notice this real quick. This is supposed to happen when I touch the treasure chest. When I walk up and I touch the treasure chest, the game actually freezes. It's not doing anything. It's trying to run this and it can't. The reason is because of a very important block that I did not show you yet in the story section. If you scroll down, there's a block here that says start cutscene. This is a vital block for this extension. If you don't use this block, the other blocks won't work correctly, okay? So I'm going to put this around that. So technically, I'm creating a cutscene as far as the program's concerned, but it's not actually going to stop my game at all. That's the important thing I want you to understand. Not all cutscenes are created equal, okay? So as I walk over to the treasure chest and I touch it, it's supposed to say the text, but I didn't see anything. Let's go up here and try it. There it is. So why did I see it up here, but I didn't see it down there? The reason is because of the position. It's setting this based on pixel position. So for instance, if I set it farther down the screen, let's say around 100 and 100, it will now happen in that location and it will always be in that location, which that might work fine if you're working with a smaller game where everything happens on one scene, but it doesn't work very good if you're working with a larger game, like a tile map game, where it's a much bigger map, right? So here's the cool thing about that. There is an alternate version, this one right here, which bases the location on the camera. So I prefer this one to that one, because usually I'm building games that are bigger than one scene. And here I can do the same sort of thing. So I can put my text in here. I found one. And then for my X and my Y, I'm basing it on the camera. So if I move around, it'll still be in the same location. So here it's spawning right there, but you'll notice if I go anywhere on the map, it's always going to be in that location until I move it, right? So I have to decide where I want it to go. If I want it to be farther down the screen, I'd have to put a bigger Y. So maybe we'll go with 120. If I want it to be farther to the left, I have to use a smaller X. So maybe 50. I 
can see what that looks like. Okay, looks like I moved a little too far to the left because now I can't see it anymore, right? So this does take some trial and error figuring out the position, but the important thing is that the position is based on the camera. Yeah, okay, so I was closer there, but I'm still off the screen a little bit. So once you figure out the number that looks good, then you're, you're going to be good, right? And no matter where you are, it will appear where you want it to. All right, so um, let's keep going with the blocks here. So that's the big difference between this one and this one. The first one is based on pixel location. This one that says camera is based on the camera's location. There's also one here that just says Sprite Say. So this works similar to a typical dialog block. Um, of course, you need to put the name of your sprite here. And if I did this, rather than appearing somewhere randomly on the screen, it's going to appear with the sprite, right? You guys see that? Let me do another one. So that actually, I feel like, looks better than the other options. But it's really depending on what you're doing, how you want it to work, right? Okay, what's the plus sign behind this one do? Oh, it changes the color. So you do can you can change the color if you want to. All right, other options. This block, I'll be honest with you guys, I've never used it. I've tried playing around with it a little bit, and I couldn't really tell what it was doing. So if you know what this block does, or if you figure it out on your own, please put it in the comments, because I like learning new things too. So I don't know how this block works. If you figure it out, put it in the comments. Okay. Down here, we have character text. I actually really like this one. So this block is great, especially if there are multiple characters in your scene that you're creating, right? So what you can do here is you can put in your text. It doesn't really work well for the scenario we have right now um, because it's really designed for if you have a conversation happening between characters because you can put with the label who's doing the talking. So what it would look like is something like this, right? It takes up a big part of the screen, so it's not something I would I would recommend in this sort of scenario. But if you're building an actual cutscene where there's dialogue happening between players, this is a great block. All right, what else we got? Um, this one right here affects the sound. You may have noticed when the text moves across the screen, it's making like a beeping sound. So you can actually turn this off if you want to and just put this on your own start so it affects your entire game. And you can choose to turn the sound on or off. And that way it's no longer doing that if you don't want it to do that anymore. The movement blocks we will talk about in a minute. Um, down here we have the cutscene blocks for when you create a cutscene. And there's also blocks to cancel a cutscene or to cancel all cutscenes or to cancel current text. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. The menu is a cool one. So the menu gives your player options that they can choose from. So let's play around with that for a minute. Let's change the cutscene up. I'm going to put it at the beginning. And I'm going to put some choices in here for the player. So when they touch a treasure chest, they're going to have choices. They can collect treasure. Or they can bury the treasure. So those are going to be their options. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a logic block after that. And remember, anything that's diamond shape, you can use as a logic. So if they choose collect treasure, I have to be very careful to make sure I spell it exactly the same way I have it up there, same number of spaces, same capitalization, or it's not going to work, right? So if the answer they choose is collect treasure, then I want this stuff to happen, okay? But if they choose bury treasure, we're going to replace the image of the text with an empty image. Or if I wanted to spend a little time on it, I could draw something as a new tile, maybe put a little dirt mound would make sense, right? Um, but for now, we'll just leave it empty. So let's take a look at the game. I walk up to the treasure. I have my two options. All right, I want you to notice something. As I'm selecting my two options, my character is still moving. That's happening because I'm pressing up and down to select my options, right? So what would be a good thing to do here is to limit the player's motions. So you may have noticed down here where the menu stuff was, there's also a condition. It's diamond shaped, so we know it's a condition. A condition that says, is menu open? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an on-game update. 
put a logic in there and say, if the menu is open, I don't want the player to walk around anymore. I'm going to set his movement to zero, zero. Or else, which means when the menu is not open, he can go back to walking. And there we go. Now he's not walking around anymore. You guys see that? So now I can select the option that I want to do. Okay. So I'm going to select collect treasure. He gets a point. Uh-oh. I'm stuck in my menu, though. What if I select bury treasure? Hmm. Still stuck in the menu. Okay. So we got a little problem here. It worked, but it's not letting me leave the cutscene. So what I'm going to do next, and I'm pretty sure this will work, I'm going to put cancel all cutscenes. So after the logic happens, the menu should disappear. Let's see if this works. I'm going to select collect a treasure. Yep. Or I'm going to bury the treasure and it disappeared. There we go. So I just wanted to show you guys all of that so you could see that when you use the story mode and you use the cutscenes, it doesn't necessarily have to be a cutscene as we think of them. That, you know, a cutscene that we think of typically pauses the game. And there's like the story that goes on. You can actually use cutscenes in the game as an element of the game if you want to, right? And that's what we did there. Okay. So we looked at these blocks. We looked at those blocks. Get last answer just shows what the player selected. It's just a bubble you can put somewhere else if you want to. Um, okay, I think I showed enough for this program. Let's switch over to the other program I started working on before we recorded this um, video. So I created a program called Cutscene. And what I've done so far is I created a simple tile map and I put two characters in there, a wizard and the player. So this is supposed to be similar to the old um, Zelda and Link games. There was a scene from my childhood where you found a wizard and he gave you a sword. So I decided to try to create a cutscene similar to that. So I've got the characters, I've got the scene, now we need to build the cutscene. So I'm going to go ahead and download the extension into this program, Arcade Story. I'm going to grab the Create Start Cutscene block. And the first thing that I want to happen is I want the player to move up to the wizard. Now I could, with what I already know, give him a velocity and all that, but then I'd have to kind of figure out when to make him stop. And I have to time it, and it can be kind of tricky to do all that. So instead... I'm going to use right here in the movement section, sprite move to, and I give it a position and I give it a speed. I love this block. So I don't have to figure out how long it takes him. All I got to do is tell him where I want him to go. So the wizard is standing at Y30 and he's in the middle of the screen. So he would, his X would be 80 because remember the width is 160. So half of that is 80. So I want to be a little bit below the player, so a little bit below 30. Let's make it 50. And then right now, he's moving too fast for my game. I want it to be a slow walk in. So let's change it to 50. And there we go. So the beginning of my game works. He walks in. There we go. And now I want the conversation to happen. So now I can throw in some of these that I said work better when you have multiple pl players, the character text. So let's give him some interesting uh, text. So the first one... I'm just going to call him Link, since obviously, like I said, I'm inspired by the Legend of Zelda games. Um, I heard you have a magical sword that can help me defeat my enemies. And then he's going to say, um, uh, put this as wizard so people know who's talking. You heard correctly, but be careful. This weapon has done more harm than good. Hoo -hoo. So that should have our player a little concerned. All right, so let's see it in action. He walks up.
This is a good looking cutscene so far. See how quickly I was able to throw that together too? All right. So after that, I want something else to happen. I want to give him an animation. So let's just real quickly create an animation where he picks up the sword. And there's no pre-made animation for that. Actually, this right here will work. Never mind. I thought there was no pre-made animation. We'll use this one. So um, we are going to check the speed here. 500 is way too slow. Let's change it to 200. Yeah, I like that. And we want it to play one time. So we will not turn the loop on. So now at the end of this, it will play his little animation. We should also give it a sound effect. So when it plays the animation in the background, we'll give it a power up sound effect. All right, let's check it out now. This is dope. I like this. All right. Anything else I want to do to this? Um, I could turn the sound off. The sound was a little bit annoying. So I'd probably put that before the cutscene to turn that off. And then I do want to mention down here, these cancel buttons. Let's say you've got a cutscene like this and there's a lot going on. And some players just don't want to wait through the cutscene. Some, some players don't care about stories. So I could throw an on A button press over here. I can throw an on A button press over here. I'm gonna mute my game real quick so it doesn't do that every time. And then inside the on A button press, I'm gonna put cancel cutscene. Let me turn the music back on. All right, so as he's talking, I'm gonna press the button and it canceled the whole cutscene, right? So we just saw the ending there. I could also, instead of doing that, I could throw a cancel current text. Do you guys catch the difference there? So the difference between canceling the entire cutscene and canceling the current text is that if you cancel the entire cutscene, it just jumps to the end, right? If you cancel the current text, you can skip through. So if there's a lot of talking, you can go from person to person and that's usually what most people do, because sometimes you there might be an important part of the conversation that you want them to get a chance to read. And if they skip the entire cutscene, they might miss too much. Right. So it's really up to you how you decide to do that. But yeah, a lot of fun stuff going on there. All right. I think we are at the end of this video. I've shown you enough material. You should be good to go ahead and build your own um, games with cutscenes now. So if you build something cool you want to share with me, please click that share button and put the link in the comment. If you learned something new today, please click the like button. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. And don't forget to tell other people about this channel so they can come and build fun games too. I will see you guys with our next extension video.